Hello, I'm Jay Bradshaw, owner of Volunteer Audio, Oliver Springs, Tennessee. I want to show you today how to install the new SoundStream GTS style radio, part number HDHU14 Plus, in this 2017 Road Glide. We'll also be going over the components that come with it, how to put it in, and we're going to be putting in a set of Hertz SX165 Neo speakers to complement this radio. All right, let's start by going over what we're going to do to this 2017 Road Glide. So from the factory, it came with the Boom 6.5 inch, a lot of people call it a GT radio. So it had navigation, but it was missing some of our modern features like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. The Bluetooth did work on it, but it was so slow, it's almost useless. Um, the navigation, it'll get you lost. So let's, let's look at what we're gonna upgrade to here. This is made by Soundstream Reserves. Uh, this is one of the, it is the first IPX6 water resistant radio available for aftermarket for your, for your Harley. It adds Apple CarPlay and Android Auto like a GTS radio. It has excellent Bluetooth. Uh, the sound output is gonna be easily controlled with a 10 band graphic EQ. And it's even got RCA outs for those of you that use those. Um, we're gonna be putting this in we're also going to upgrade the speakers. We're gonna to go to a Hertz SX165neo. This is the most efficient speaker we can buy. It sounds the loudest, the clearest. It is a great speaker, three year warranted if you buy it through Volunteer Audio, but it's also so loud off the power of this radio that there is no amplifier needed. Uh, what I mean by that is it's gonna be plenty loud for us to hear it clearly while traveling down the highway. 85 miles an hour, you're gonna be able to hear your music. Now, if you're the type that you're just nuts about how loud it's gonna be, and you don't wanna hear the motor or the wind at 85, then we add an amplifier. But I think this is gonna be great for our customer. Uh, I'm gonna go over what comes in the package. So when you get this radio, it is completely plug and play. So this is gonna be a very easy install. It's gonna come with this harness that plugs into the factory Harley connector, uh, and then it's also gonna plug right into the back of the radio. You're gonna receive this module. Now this is only gonna come if you bought the thumb control module. It is required. This radio will not cut on as a plug and play unit without this module. Uh, it also, your thumb controls will not work without this module. If you wanted to not use this, say you had an Electroglide standard, you don't have thumb controls, you have no desire to use it, uh, there is a red turn on wire, it's an ignition wire. If you tap that, run it to your cigarette lighter, this radio will power on and off and work without a thumb control module. But let's be clear, if you don't buy this, it's not plug and play, your thumb controls won't work. So first step, when you get this radio and you're gonna put it in your bike, I want you to plug your thumb control module into your harness. Um, you wanna do this first because if you plug it in after you have plugged it into the main power supply on the Harley, your thumb controls will not work. This harness and these loops decide what kind of radio it's connected to. So we wanna plug it in now before it's powered up. You're also gonna get a microphone. This microphone is gonna come with two different bases. One of them's a little self-stick base that works really well behind your windshield. That way you can use your Siri hands-free or your voice assistant through Google for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Something you can't do with your GTS radio without a headset. You're gonna get a bag with four little rubber grommets. This is probably gonna be the most overlooked part by anyone that gets this. These four little sleeves are gonna go in the bolt hole locations of the radio. This is kind of isolates those bolts from rattling against the side of the radio. You'll see this same part on your stock factory radio. So enough talking about what comes in it. Uh, let's get to the bike. We're gonna get it disassembled to show you how to take it apart, how easy this is to go in, to plug in. Uh, it's gonna plug right into our factory USB port, our factory FM antenna, and our factory main harness. It's gonna be very easy, so let's get to it. So here we have Brian's 2017 Road Glide. Beautiful bike. Uh, all it needs is a little bit of an audio upgrade uh, to bring it into the future. Uh, we're gonna show you how to get it apart. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our upper speaker grills. We're gonna use a tool that won't scratch our paint. We're only gonna need three other tools for this. We're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver for our bolts around the top of our windshield. We're gonna use a T25 Torx driver for our perimeter bolt at the bottom of our interfering, as well as the Torx bolts that are on each side at our speakers. And we're gonna use an Allen head tool uh, to remove the Allen heads that are holding our side marker lights on. So let's get this bike took apart. First step, you're gonna to go to the inside of these speaker grills closest to where your handlebars are. And you're gonna push down and pry up. It's gonna release some locking tabs 
to the two tabs and get us to where we can get to our screws that are holding our, our fairing together. Uh, you want to be careful that you use a tool that's not sharp or not going to scratch the paint because we don't want to damage this inner fairing. So both grills come off as easy as that. Next step, we're going to take our T25 Torx driver and we're going to remove the bottom screw on each side of the inner fairing. The, the second one up doesn't actually connect anything together. It's just holding this little um, wind deflector on. So one of those on each side, get those removed. Now keep up with all your bolts. There's not that many, but we don't want to lose them. All right, we're going to use our Allen head tool. Let me see if I can tell you the size. It's a 3 16 There's going to be one bolt on each side at our side marker lights. So I'm going to remove those. So remove those. We're going to go ahead and remove our windshield. There's just four Phillips screws that hold it on. I'm going to go ahead and just loosen these so the windshield doesn't fall off and remove it. Set it over so it doesn't get damaged. Remove the remaining two screws. Sometimes these have been already changed out to maybe an Allen head or a Torx head, but, but factory they are a Phillips head. So, All right, so once you've removed those four Phillips screws, you can simply just lift up. There's a couple clips that hold this in. Uh, to remove that vent. At this point on each side, on each side of the radio, there's going to be a little three wire connector. That is your side marker light. So unplug both of those. And we only have two more bolts to go and we'll have this fairing off. All right, so these are really a T27. A T25 takes them off because they're not that tight. So the last two I always take off are these two. And I do that so I can hold the fairing while I do it and I don't have to worry about it falling off. They're also the first two that I normally reinstall to make sure that both sides line up properly. All right, at this point, we can simply slide our outer fairing off and set it to the side. All right, so we took our fairing off, and now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install this radio or to take the factory one out and put a new one in. So on both sides, we're gonna use our 3 16 Allen head to remove four bolts. That's all that holds the radio into the bike at this point. We're gonna disconnect our factory GPS antenna. We won't be using that because our navigation is gonna work through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's gonna use the GPS built into your phone. It's also gonna always stay up to date. We're gonna disconnect our AM FM antenna our factory USB connector, we'll be reusing that along with the main harness. So let's get them unplugged. So first, we're gonna do the GPS antenna. On the bottom of it, there's a little button that you push. Once you get that button pushed, it's gonna release and come off. I'm gonna get it back around where you can see it's a little blue tab. You gotta push that, you don't wanna break the factory radio. There's another small tab on the bottom of the AM FM antenna. Same idea, just push in the tab, it's gonna slide out. Our USB has one tab on the top. It's a special four pin connector. It's not used anywhere else but on a Harley, but we have that same exact connector on the back of our new radio. Last connector is this main harness. There's one button you push in and you rotate this lever and it's going to disconnect that harness. So at this point, we've completely disconnected this radio from the bike. So we're gonna take our four screws out, our mounting bolts.
Now, if you'll notice, there's a bracket right on top of this radio held in with two more Torx bolts. If you take those out, you'll transfer this to the same place on your new radio. It already has the threaded holes for them, just like factory. All right, so our four bolts are out. Simply gonna pick the radio up and set it out. All right, so we have our new Soundstream radio. As you notice, it's gonna slide down, go in the exact location. Now, in this case, two of those little rubber bushings stayed on these bolts. I'm just gonna leave them on it and go into these holes on this new radio. A little rubber sleeve we talked about earlier. I'll get two more out of the bag to go in the rear holes. It is easier to just go ahead and slide those on the bolt and then put it in. As you notice, it's all aluminum on the back. Nice heat sink. It's going to carry away heat. At the same time, it's completely sealed to not allow any water inside this radio. So if you slide your little rubber grommet on the bolt and use your tool to push it down into the radio. Once you've pushed, it'll start so easy because if you can take the other radio out, you can put this radio in. All right, we'll go over these additional connectors on the back. So you do have three sets of RCAs, front, rear, and sub output. I really like that if you're going to add on a rear sub because now we have independent control of the sub. Uh, at Volunteer Audio, as we do amplifiers in these, we're going to continue to do speaker level in to our amplifiers. It creates a, a much better sound. We're not going to get any engine noise from the stator, from the charging system. Uh, no ground loop is going to be created, so we're not going to have that whine. What a lot of people do call an alternator or engine noise through our tweeters. And you know in a Harley, a lot of times we're using a super tweeter that is so loud and so bright to begin with, we don't want any hum or hiss through it. By doing a high level or speaker, speaker level into your amp and then back out, which we can do with our harness, uh, you're going to delete any chance of that happening. If you go RCA in, it is extremely important that your ground on your amplifier goes all the way to your battery and that you also have a ground going from the chassis of the radio or the ground feeding the radio to your amp to delete any ground loop. Some of your better RCAs are going to have that built into it, but most of the time we're seeing people use a pretty lower end, uh, maybe marine grade style RCA cable. Now on the back of this radio, you're gonna see we have our FM antenna. We're gonna plug that into the FM antenna hole, just like factory, that easy. The uh, USB port, let me find that connector, it's fell down here. The USB is this chrome looking connector with the four pin. It's gonna plug in just like the factory one as well. So if you have an Electroglide standard or maybe you have a police bike, it didn't come with the USB and Volunteer Audio, we offer that in a package for your bike along with everything else you'll need that may be missing. All right, let's look at our harness. So here's our factory connector. We just looked at it a minute ago. We unplugged it from the bike. You're gonna see a mating connector on our Soundstream harness. Plug that in, rotate that lever, we're now connected. We have that exact same connector here to go at the top. Now a minute ago I talked about high level in and out. We exposed all the speaker wires on this connector so if you are adding an amplifier, you can simply cut here. From your radio side will go to the input side of your amp. From the output side of your amp will go into the bike and you didn't modify any wiring on your Harley, yet now you have this really clean, strong signal in and out of your amp. No DSP needed, nothing to have to flash, and we're fixing to make a video you'll see real soon on how to use the EQ in the radio so that you know you don't have to have that DSP that so many people are trying to tell you that you need. All right, so we're gonna tuck this harness down under the radio and plug in the main connector into the back of the radio. Let's get this thumb control module down here too. There's a lot of room under the radio behind the headlock. All right, so same thing, plug it in, swing that lever around, it's gonna lock it in. 
Now this additional connector here, if you had a powered antenna that normally plugged in to the, the factory wiring, we have that same connector here as both an amp turn on or an antenna turn on. So you can plug it in there and it's not gonna turn on until the FM is turned on or the radio is powered up. Here's our mic input. The only thing we have left now is, as you see, we've got the radio in, it's done. We have to route a microphone and we're gonna put it right on top of this vent behind the windshield. So let's start putting it back together. All right, so let's take a second and talk about the microphone. So it's gonna come with this nice mic. It's gonna have a large piece of foam over the end to help with wind noise. But it comes with this huge clip that you're not gonna find anywhere to put it on your bike. So you're gonna take that off. In the package, it's gonna come with a small 3M ready to adhere stick on uh, mount that you're gonna put on the end of the mic. Now leave just enough lead to make it outside the crack here between the fairing and your vent and then plug it in here. So you're gonna wanna either re-zip tie or bread tie this thing up in here and then leave just enough to go on top of the vent. So I just wanna show that connection being made, just plugs into this 3.5 jack and then goes on top of the fairing. Ready to reassemble the outer part of our fairing. I'm gonna put the screws in on each side of the speaker to hold it. All right, now our fairing's not gonna go anywhere. So let's talk about this microphone. So I've left just enough lead to make it up here. We're gonna run it out between this crack and when we put the vent on. So make sure and plug in your front lights back in and then get your vent ready to install your microphone. All right, so we're going to run this out right up here at the top of our vent. Uh, the idea is we want it where the windshield is protecting the microphone, but at the same time, we don't want it to look bad. So I'm gonna pull out just enough lead for what we're doing. So I'm gonna take some alcohol, clean a spot and stick it right here before we put the windshield back on. A little bit of alcohol, let it dry. That just makes sure if it's been waxed or some sort of coating's been put on, that it's not gonna make our microphone fall off going down the road. All right, our alcohol has dried. And once that base is on, the mic has a little bit of adjustment as far as angle. It, is not got a, it does not have to be pointed straight toward you. It will pick up from all angles. And I don't wanna oversell what the mic's capable of. It can hear you. Uh, your voice assistant will be able to understand you as well as it does when you talk to your phone. And if you get a Bluetooth call, you will be able to tell them, hey, I'm riding down the road. When I get stopped, I'll call you back. Uh, it's gonna be hard to hold a long conversation, I think, through the wind and the engine noise uh, through this Bluetooth microphone. Uh, but it is definitely something that's gonna be nice to have compared to the GTS radio that doesn't have it. Now we're gonna get our windshield back on and keep on putting this back together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start our four screws to hold the windshield on. I normally would start these and then put the windshield on at the end. Make sure you get them started exactly straight. Definitely don't want to cross thread anything. All right, so I'm gonna get all of those started, slide my washers out, or I can slide this windshield back down in here. All right, this is a windshield, so don't over tighten it. It's normally plexiglass, but some sort of polycarbonate that you don't want to crack. All right, so let's go ahead and put our two T25 Torx bolts in at the bottom on each side. All 
All right, we're gonna put our 3 16 bolts back through our marker lights on the side. All right, so as you see, this didn't take long. Um, definitely, if you weren't changing the speakers at this point, you'd be done. You'd just snap your grills in and you'd be finished. But let's go ahead and take these speakers out. Somebody's upgraded these in the past to a kicker speaker. Not efficient enough or loud enough for this customer. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it and put our new Hertz speakers in. So you're gonna use that same T25 Torx screwdriver that you were using. Just take the four bolts out that are holding the speaker in. This is gonna be the same whether it's a stock speaker, if somebody's already upgraded it on a road glide, you don't have to pull the speaker pods. I really like that, it saves us some time. Let's take our speaker and our adapter out. So this is a kicker speaker. We are big fans of kicker, they're a great company. Uh, this speaker's probably four years old. Uh, and as time goes on, technology gets better, things get better. So don't ever judge somebody by uh, an older technology. So here's our comparison between our Hertz Neo speaker and our kicker speaker. Much beefier, a uh, lot larger cone, a lot louder tweeter. All right, so when you take your factory speaker out, you're gonna have a white connector and a black connector. Uh, always take some sort of tool, crimp them a little tighter so you don't have to worry about later about them coming loose. And that larger connector, the one that's black, is the negative. Now, if you'll notice on the back of your Hertz speaker, it's gonna be labeled positive and negative as well, and there is a, a larger negative post and a uh, like-sized positive post on the other side. So you're gonna connect your negative, black to negative, clear or white to positive. Once you have that in, fish it right back in there and install those same screws you just took out. Get past this one little ear. All right. These heard speakers are a perfect fit. They line up perfectly with the factory screw holes. They hold the factory terminals. No modification is needed to the pods whatsoever. There are some other companies that people think, well, it's a bigger magnet, it's gonna be louder. It's not gonna be louder just because the magnet's bigger. These use a neodymium magnet, which is really, really strong in comparison to a regular ferrite or, or the strontium magnets are on your cheaper speakers. Um, but by doing this, we don't have to cut any holes in any of the factory pods. We're gonna have a lot better, tighter base response because we're not gonna lose that from this hole that's had to be patched up. Let's get our other speaker swapped out. Ready? All right, let's remove the four screws on the other side. Careful not to drop any of these so you don't have to pull your fairing back off to fetch them. Same step, all we're doing is squeezing these connectors, making that gap in there a little smaller so they'll hold on to that speaker tighter. It's gonna be a lot of vibration and we don't wanna have to take them back out. So again, the black connector goes to negative, clear connector to positive. So getting your polarity right is extremely important if you wanna have good mid bass. We've got another build coming up soon where we're gonna go over a bike that has some of the very best equipment in it, but the people that put it in didn't really pay attention to polarity and some other very important things, and they didn't get a good outcome. So we've got one that we're fixing to do basically a wire rescue on and fix, but we're gonna reuse all the equipment that's already in the box. So definitely subscribe to our channel, like our videos, so you'll be notified when that happens. We also have another video coming up very soon where we're gonna show you how to add wireless CarPlay to this SoundStream radio. So that'll be coming up within just the next day or so. If 
factory grills will go right back on. We also have some upgraded grills, a little heavier duty, nicer looking that also complement these speakers very well. They also have a Hertz logo on them. You can reach out to us directly if you're interested in those. All right, so there we have it. We have finished our installation. Very quick install, huge, huge improvement in sound, and we're fixing to listen to that in a minute. But here you have your GTS style Apple CarPlay Android Auto radio. Time to remove the protective cover. And uh, the most efficient, what we believe currently is the best sounding speaker on the market for your Harley, the SX165 Neo Hertz Neo speakers in the front. So let's fire this up. Let's go over a little bit of the features and let you hear it in action. All right, so we've, we're done with our install. We're fixing to fire it up and listen to it, but I wanted to take a second and go over a common concern we have from customers with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, this isn't specific to this radio, but it is something that we get a lot of tech support calls on. So for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to work, the way it comes shipped out of the box, you're gonna plug your phone into the factory USB port. It's gonna be the one that's in this cubby hole, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a high quality cable. If you have an Android phone that uses USB-C, they're really finicky, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have an automotive grade cable. We have two companies that we sell at Volunteer Audio that are true charge and sync. Sync is the key word. Sync means it does data transfer, and if we're gonna transfer the data from your phone to this radio for maps and audio, we're gonna to have to make sure that that cable does a good job of that. So it doesn't mean it's gotta be expensive, it just means you can't go to the gas station and buy a $5 cable. You're gonna to have to get one, we have the Skosh cables, let me grab them here and show you. So Skosh is one of the brands that we carry that makes a very, very nice, they call it a strike line premium cable. It's available in one foot or four foot. So one foot if you're just gonna come up here to the handlebar, four foot if you got somewhere a little further to go. The shorter you can do the better. The longer you make that cable, the least data transfer we get as far as the rate, and the more likely you get glitching from locking up on Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, either one. Uh, if you've got a USB-C cable, uh, we offer it by both companies, but we also have it in an iSimple brand. So iSimple or Skosh, all you gotta do is go to volunteeraudio.com, search the word USB-C or Lightning, and these cables are gonna pop up. Definitely gonna answer a lot of the problems that most people have. A good cable is gonna make it where you just don't get aggravated with your radio. So the, uh, the phones are great, the radio's great. We gotta have something good to connect them together. All right, so let's connect our phone to here. And I wanna go back over Apple CarPlay in this radio now. That GT radio did not have that. Let's go ahead and turn on our, our bike. So I've had a couple questions here lately I wanna to try to answer today. Uh, showing you here at the end. Uh, first, I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna do the first connection of Bluetooth to this radio. And then we're gonna turn it on and see how quick it turns on and plays some music. Uh, when you first initialize this radio and you turn it on, you're gonna select your language. You're also gonna select your location. So if you are somebody that lives overseas and you've bought one of these radios, when you select the correct location, it's gonna turn the radio to the correct settings, whether it's NTSC or PAL or whatever it takes for your broadcast in your area. So I've selected my language, I've selected my location. We have radio playing. Test our thumb controls. They do work. We're gonna do volume up and down. All right, so you hear that beeping every time I press a button. It sees it, it beeps, drives me nuts. You can turn it off in the menu. Um, let me get my Bluetooth connected now. Home, settings, Bluetooth settings. Pairing, so very simple to go through. Let's connect our pairing up here. Now I'm gonna to go to my phone, go to my Bluetooth settings, and find this radio. So settings, Bluetooth. It's gonna say SoundStream HD. So find SoundStream HD, tell it to connect. It's probably gonna pop up and ask you if it's okay to pair and give you a number. Um, that easy, we're connected to this, that was very quick. Um, you would have to wait two minutes for your radio to turn on just to try to connect to the older style radio. So let's turn it off. Actually, let's get our source on music here. Home, Bluetooth music. We're gonna turn on one of our copyright free music because if we play something else, they're gonna flag this and not let us uh, let you hear it. 
All right, so I've got some sound. We're gonna cut it off. Let's give it a few seconds. We're gonna cut it back on and see how fast can it connect to this phone in real time. Okay, so radio's powering on. It's pairing to our Bluetooth now. And we're connected and playing music. That was very, very quick in comparison to what we're used to. All right, let's go through some other features. All right, so I've got my phone connected. Apple CarPlay is up on the screen. This is through USB. Watch our next video. I'm gonna show you how to do this with wireless CarPlay. Uh, it doesn't come with that. It's an additional part, but we do already have it available. It's already been tested. So what I wanna go over is thumb controls. A lot of people go, are my thumb controls still gonna work? Are they still gonna do what they always did? What's well, gonna do everything we need for music? So check out what we got. Both sides, so it doesn't matter which side. If you go up and down on the buttons, the thumb controls, you're going to get volume up, you're gonna get volume down. So you can do that from either side, so that's up to you. On the right side, if you press in, it's gonna mute the music. So if you're slowing down to a red light, you wanna yell at somebody next to you, you got it blaring, just mute it, press in on that button. Uh, the left controls, if you press in on the button, it's gonna go through sources. So radio, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth if you didn't have CarPlay connected, USB if you had a USB in. So we went to FM. Now, I'm glad we ended up here on FM because I wanna tell you about something that's gonna be a little confusing to you, but it's really a safety feature. You're gonna only be able to go through presets with this left control. So you're gonna to wanna to set your FM presets before you ever take off. There's no need to be scanning through or reaching up here on the radio. It's not gonna scan from radio station to radio station. This also helps because if you got weak signals, maybe we're in Oliver Springs, Tennessee, 3,000 person town. We've got a lot of really weak stations that people like to listen to. So once you find that station and you preset it, you're not scanning past it every time. But you do have a total of 16, no, I'm sorry, let me get my math there, 18 presets. So we have uh, six times three, 18. So once you find a station and you set that as a preset, when you do track forward or backwards, it's actually just gonna go through your presets to each one that you have. That is supposed to work that way. It's not messed up. You don't have a problem with your controls. It's not gonna scan. But if we go back to Apple CarPlay and I'm listening to an album on here and I do that, it is gonna go to the next song. So the next track, the previous track are all controlled from those same buttons. Let's get it off FM and back playing on here. Again, pushing in will change sources. On the left side, pushing in will mute. On the right side, right and left do not currently do anything on the right controls. Now, I know this is using a SCOSH module, and I know with software updates, as other things come about in the future, they may decide to assign these buttons to do something else. But keep in mind, we have another version of this radio coming out later that will do things like info on the screen. So I know it's something you probably hardly ever use on your bike, but our next version will have that, and this control is already set up to use the same control to be able to toggle through those things. So uh, Scotia is working on data to be able to turn on amplifiers. Probably not gonna happen before the RR comes out on the next radio for boom. So right now, this is not a boom bike. We're not keeping boom amps, but I wanted to make sure you understood how the thumb controls worked, what they were supposed to do, and they do that. They do exactly what they were mapped out and supposed to do by SoundStream. So all radio functions, you're not gonna be able to go through data because it doesn't display it up on here. You're not gonna be able to search through a map or zoom in on a map, but we've got Waze, we've got uh, Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps. Those things are automatically gonna bring up the roads to the right size. We don't have to zoom. We don't have to move around. It's gonna keep us in, at the correct orientation as we're driving too. So. I know there's some people are going to tell you it doesn't do everything it used to do. It doesn't need to. It does everything you need it to do. All right, so Apple CarPlay up working. If we had an Android device, which you don't personally have, a USB-C cable plugged in would give you that as well, uh, and you would have your uh, Google Play apps up on here. 
Um, on the screen, you got a home button. That's the same button as the source button. It does look a little different when you've brought it up on the screen versus just pressing through it. It's only gonna highlight available sources. If you're plugged in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you are not going to see Bluetooth available. It's working through that Apple CarPlay. If you unplug the device, which I'm fixing to do, you'll see that it highlights Bluetooth because now our Bluetooth is turned on in the radio. It only uses one at a time, not both at the same time. USB music, you can put USB music on a flash drive. Uh, I'm not sure about all the formats, definitely gonna do uh, MP3, WMA, not sure about the new high res formats or even what size uh, USB you have. I'll do a video later updating on how to do that. Um, if you plug in your drive and it doesn't work, you probably have the wrong format or you have too large of a thumb drive. All right, so as you see, it's installed. I think it's time to listen to some music and uh, see how big of an improvement this was. All right, so we've got our copyright free music loaded up. We're fixing to turn it up, but I wanted to go over a few of the settings with you. I do have the loud function on in the radio because we don't have an external amplifier. It is louder with loud on. Uh, we have the EQ currently set to completely flat. I'm gonna do a video very soon where we're gonna RTA this bike and I'm gonna adjust this and show you how to get the absolute most out of this radio as far as sound without using a DSP. But just for you to know, we've done nothing to make this sound better yet. This is straight out of the box, flat, connected up to these Hertz speakers. So let's get our copyright free music going. I wanna turn it up and we're gonna see how loud it is. in that right control, it's gonna mute it very quickly. As you hear, this is extremely loud. This is so much louder than a Boom Stage 1. I'd put it right there with most Boom Stage 2 as far as volume goes, but it's still clear so we can turn it on up uh, and it's clear seemingly all the way to full volume. So again, another video I'll do some testing. We'll show you step by step how loud it goes in loud clear how loud it goes with loudness off so we can give you the best settings for installing an amplifier. But while this thing is loud, let's turn it back on. Unmute. <laughs> Very, very loud. Super impressive, super clean, super clear. You'll have no problem hearing this at highway speeds riding down the road. Again, like I said earlier, if you wanted to add an amp, you definitely can, but that's for the people who don't wanna hear the wind, don't wanna hear the bike. They want it so loud that that's all you hear. Uh, I think this comes really close to that without an amp. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it, please subscribe to us so you can see our other videos, tell your friends. Uh, if you get an electric glide standard or a police bike, we have a package that already comes with these speakers for street glide and road glide that does not have boom stage two. We're also going to have a package that comes with these SX165 Neos. Volunteeraudio.com, 1-844-30-AUDIO. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, answer any other questions you have. Comment below, I'll very quickly answer your questions. We have the best tech support and the best service in the industry. Two year warranty on the radio from authorized dealers three-year warranty on the speakers. Thank you for watching and God bless.